hate puppies. Good podcast. I feel threatened. For the money, for the glory, and for the fun. But mostly for the fun. Stu's back! (laughs) Whoa. I like it. I have no idea what that quote's from. I don't know, but it's for the fun. That's why we're here. I know that. That We're not here for the fortune. There's not a lot of glory. No. No. We were talking about that pre-show. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the most lucrative podcast in the business, (laughs) Inside the Pallet House. The only podcast dedicated to making so much damn money. Money. (laughs) All the money. And helping you solve first world problems and hopefully helping you figure out what beer you should be drinking this weekend. This week, you'll be drinking the beer if you're a douche. Nice. (laughs) It's a little tease. So this whole Uh, cruise in. Yeah. (laughs) Great. We'll see how that goes. Actually, we'll be like, we love it. Like, all right. And douches we are. Let's just say before I drink this beer, I'm going to need a Huck shirt and a pair of Costa glasses. I would I would agree with that. I would agree <laughs> with that. And not a fishing rod to be seen. No. That's right. You get it. Do we have any you stickers? <laughs> Maybe a hook on my hat. Oh, this, you'll see. When you see it, you'll, the stickers are prevalent. Maybe a hook on my hat. A hook on your hat that's never been used. Mm. Well, yeah. Well, the one, the designer one that's the clip, not exactly. an actual, not yeah. an actual hook like a grown-up. Come on, get out Damn of it. here with that. Okay. Speaking of hats, we don't do it for the glory. Yes, we don't do it, but we. I got to give Woody a shout out. Woody, yeah. thank you. One Woody hooked the, you up. One of the club scandals guys uh, came by here and was prepping Brendan for the uh, next trip, and he gave me a hat because he heard out. Love the last one so much, so I will gladly rock that thing and you go. act like I'm cool enough to go to the club <laughs> scandals. You could go. There ain't no Maybe. CPAP machines out in those yeah, waters, there's though. not, no. And now that I'm not drinking, I don't know how much fun I would have out there. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to murder Brendan. <laughs> there's a lot of semen. <laughs> oh, now you're drawing me back in. There we go. Yeah, these guys have boats and... Oh, sail. oh! What'd you? Oh, what? What? Huh? <laughs> Am I? Yeah. I mm. thought you. You. I thought you were going. No. Oh, oh you were going. Oh, oh I got you now. Got it. No, no, no. How are you going to survive out there without being able to just drink in excess and then spend money on frivolous shit? Oh, you see, I get to bring all the frivolous shit. To you purchase Club's all candle. the. Sh- Frivolous shit. You yeah, I show only up need for that trip. I show up with the grill gun, you know, so I can light massive fires very quickly. Yeah. That's an overpriced. Go toy. through two pound propane tanks in thirty seconds. That's right. I bring the Yeti. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got that, and I do have my eye on yet another cooler that I saw. Oh, there's a new cooler. I haven't purchased it, and I don't know that I will because it's actually way oh, you too will. expensive. You've already said too much. <laughs> I, I I do I do <laughs> covet it. Which one? It's a cooler that basically, it's like a Yeti that's built into a kayak, for lack of a better word. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what, you have to buy a boat to get the cooler? No, 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 no. No, the cooler, no, no, you can't use it as a boat. <laughs> okay. You can only use it as a cooler. But it's in a kayak. It, that's the closest approximation I can think of to like. Oh, so it floats. It's a oh, floating yeah, but it's all okay. one. it's all one piece. But and you can't got, sit in it. No, no, no. Oh, okay. It's worthless as a boat. You sounded like you were like, I found this new radio I really like. It comes in a $30,000 car. Right. This is basically if it did come in a $30,000 car, but you couldn't drive the car. <laughs> it's a hood ornament. So is it like designed for uh, tubing? It sounds like it's designed for... It's designed for tubing, but it also has like cup holders and like you can post up next so to it. So you're not it. dragging a big... So weird yeah. shaped cooler it down the through. river. Yeah, you got to It cuts through nice. Yes. You this is yours. It's but like, this is it's a, a cooler kayak. Yeah, but so they've made those that have little circular coolers that don't hold a lot. This is the next iteration. And this and thing actually let has Let me like, guess you saw this last weekend. No, I didn't see it last weekend. Oh. <laughs> I was I was looking for a cheap cooler tube and then I found the expensive version. And then I started going to look at them, and then I realized, oh, that is better. That hmm. is the greatest. You will machine. buy this, maybe before scandals. 
just so I can have it floating out there. By because yeah. that dude Woody, he has built a massive floating. It's similar to what you have. Yeah. Except his is like a full floating bar instead of just a dock. Uh huh. But it's the same concept with the chairs that you can kind of sit in. Mm hmm. It looks amazing. And is that new for this year? Yes. I was going to say, I don't remember pictures of it yet. No. Hmm. And the beauty of this is, I was asking, I was like, where'd you get those huge ballasts that you put under it? And he's got a place right, right out on the Rappahannock out by the bay. Yeah. And he says, these things just wash up. Float up. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they literally just wash up. And so like they float, you know, yeah. all the way yeah. over to him and he gets them and he'll just be like, yeah, maybe I'll keep this one. It's kind of nice. And he kept a couple. This one's in pretty good shape. Yeah. yeah. He found two that were like really nice. And I guess they use them for like oyster beds and crap. They uh-huh. hang and stuff off of them. They yeah. try to dock them down, but then storms come through, remove them. And then the Lord provides. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Damn. Good point. Can, can, you, can you edit that out later? <laughs> I don't think they heard that. It's a solid point, but it wasn't solid. <laughs> oh, no. No. So I went to uh, Mellow Mushroom before this. Ooh. The one right down the street? Yeah. I ate myself some of their pizza. I think their pizza is so overrated. I do too. And so I actually tried their thin crust. But you like, exp- like, you like the expensive version of things. No, I like the atmosphere there. <laughs> I do think it's a cool. Uh, have they gotten, any, have they gotten any better with their service? Yeah, the service was good tonight. Well, yeah, Stacy was on point. Just every time I go to that one, it always seems slow. Nah, she seemed good, but I've always liked the mellow mushroom vibe. And look, the sandwiches are good, calzones yeah. are good. The pizza is just way overrated. Mm-hmm. But tonight, I decided to try their new thin crust, which actually was pretty good. But. I can feel it's all up in my guts. Just <laughs> fucking your guts up. Yeah, like I feel I feel pretty shitty. In fact, we got home and my daughter was like, I'm going to bed. Yeah. And my wife was like, my stomach hurts. I'm going to bed. And I was like, I'm going to go drink some beers to do a podcast. Yeah. So, yeah, mm. you guys are going to probably hear more of those. Uh, I got home from baseball sparks. and like sat down on the couch and I was about to send you that picture, Brendan. And I was like, oh, crap, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that I happens. Forgot. And then the wife was like, yeah, you forgot about that? I was like, yeah, I was getting ready to go upstairs and put like my comfy clothes on and hang out. She goes, well, I would have stopped you because I knew you had to go. <laughs> yes. I would have been like, where the hell is Troy? <laughs> Especially when Stu walked in, I'd be like, yeah. Twilight Zone. Like, Uh-oh. like Stu's walking in and, and Troy is not. It's been one of those weeks, man. I feel like, I feel like. Today, like Monday felt like Tuesday, Tuesday felt like, I feel like today's Friday. I feel today like, is Friday. I mean, like I up am, here. Yeah. Today's yeah. Been, been Friday all day. I've been rocking this week, dude. And then I still got to go to work tomorrow. Yeah. On a Saturday. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Even though today is technically <laughs> Thursday. Oh, let's not bring <clears throat> technical technicalities. Technicalities are bullshit. Yeah. So you, you did bring up though, I spend too much money and I. I well, it's a running theme here. But I've been really good. Yeah. For a few months now. You told me the number. You knocked down a lot of your debt. I have. And I think uh I think I basically had one of those moments like where like the the, the junkie makes it yeah. two to coming up on three months. Yeah. And then thinks <laughs> I'm good. A taste won't hurt me. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna have a taste. A taste. No, it's called a straightener. So I took it I took a taste. I took yeah. a taste. Of my favorite you drugs, got about, spending money. You got about 60, 70% in, into your, to your goal, and you were like, well, I can take a cheat day. I had a cheat day. Yeah. My cheat day fucking blew up. <laughs> what? <laughs> it blew up bad, man. It's, it all fell apart. I'll tell you, here's how it, here's how it all really here's how it started. You know the Greek festival? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was all last four days. I haven't been days. there in forever. So for people who aren't from Richmond, we, we have a we have a Greek festival here. For whatever reason, reason, Richmond is full of Greeks. Like our restaurants, our Italian restaurants are really like Greek restaurants masquerading <laughs> as Italian restaurants. I know, two, the, I know two Mexican restaurants that are owned by Greek families and they serve Greek food on, on the back end. Yeah, that's basically. I don't know if we have a ton of Greek so much as I mean, we definitely have a lot, but I think like something about the Greek festival, Richmond, Richmond's such a melting pot. I think they we like we fully embrace like the Greek festival. We fully embrace St. Patrick's Day. We fully embrace a a folk festival. We fully embrace like any of these festivals. It's true. They do Armenian food festivals that are big here. Like, yep, you're not selling me that there's some 
obscene amount of Armenians here, but like, because for whatever reason, when people ask me, they go, "What is the, like, what is the quintessential Richmond food item?" And I really Ooh. think about it. You know, yeah. like you run down the list of all the things that yeah, we what have. What are we known for? And we don't really Nothing. have anything. No. But we do have something. And, and hear me out on this. We have baked spaghettis. We do that yeah. in various corners of Richmond. Yeah. Each one more obscene than the last. We yeah. can get like Damn near for eight yeah. pounds of food. Robin Inn, <laughs> when it was open, had a great one. Joe's yeah, Inn has Joe's a great Inn. one. Then you got like the Stella's. Now you got yep. this Four Seasons place. There's, we have these places that do baked spaghettis. And it's kind of when people say, what is the thing? I, it took me a while to figure it out. And I was like, actually, something I don't see other places is we take a pile of spaghetti. It's tossed in sauce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We fill it with meat. And we cover it in way too much cheese, and then we just bake it. Or just the right amount. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. And basically, the only difference is how much garlic's in it. It's like really the only yeah. major difference. And then they do, you will see places, they call it Greek baked spaghetti. Yeah. Yep. Then you do the places that are like, they all have one that's the name of the restaurant, baked spaghetti, and that's their signature baked spaghetti. It's funny you say that because a buddy of mine in college, we... We used to go and do the rental house at OBX like everybody every year, like sure. college group. And we'd have 10, 15 people and guys and girls. And my buddy Moose, he was he was our cook, and he'd cook for us almost every night. And his famous night was his baked spaghetti. And he was, was he from Richmond? Yeah. And okay, then like here we go. he would he would bring that baked spaghetti out and he'd be like, We'd all be drinking all day, and he'd be like we're like, holy shit, Moose. Like, it's like a brick, you know? And yeah. he's like, only cheese has more cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But I think that is the Richmond thing. Yeah. We're baked spaghetti. But that is a Greek restaurant thing. Yeah, so, but isn't baked spaghetti just, it's just the noodle. Because it's, it's lasagna. No, but it's spaghetti. It's spaghetti Noodles. noodle, yeah. Yeah, I know. But I'm just like, yeah, it's all the same ingredients. all Italian? Like, for the, yeah. Fettuccine Alfredo, or <laughs> it's just the know, noodle like, yeah, it's whatever noodle. Yeah, it's you basically bake it in. there's not a lot of variation, but the baked <laughs> I spaghetti. Do like baked spaghetti more than spaghetti, and it is. That's it's the, in the Greek places. Yeah. All those places do Greek food, so I think. And I think baked spaghetti trumps the shit out of lasagna. Absolutely, <clears throat> but then we have the Greek fest, right? So yeah. we have all these baked spaghetti places. So I'm like, there must be on some level a lot of Greeks here, or at least a lot of Greek restaurateurs. Yeah. I think we can all at least agree that that exists. There's some Greek delis and stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We have Greek markets. Yeah. Like it's it's interesting. I, I mean, I'm not calling you a liar by saying we don't have a lot of Greeks. We probably... I've never done do. the research. I don't know. I don't but, know what it but is. But I do think we love festivals. We do. Yeah. And the Greek fest gets a lot of people oh, yeah. to it. And it's it's actually not even that enjoyable because you show up. <laughs> and it's like... It's, it's so big now. Yeah, there's like, so there's this church here in town, and they have the whole parking lot, and they basically bought like a city block, yeah. essentially. And they just fill it with tents and food trucks and, and craziness, and the line will go out yep. and all mm-hmm. the way down the block. It's insane. And this year was the first year they brought it back in person. They did it in years past where it was strictly drive through. Yeah, during yep. COVID. Yep. Yeah. So this year they they put it back on. But when my wife and I started dating, it was like in the mid two thousands, and like we go to that every year, every and we go multiple days, and like you could grab Not bottles of wine, yeah, and you could have a blast out there. They had music and dancing and good food. That's it. Or good food to people who like Greek food. I'm not a big Greek. So food I went to it. With my wife and, it, uh, you know, it was it a hundred degrees. Cause every year I remember going back in the day, it was a, it was always it hot. It's usually hot. Dude. It was like, had a little chill in the air. Yeah. And then it the, was this past weekend. So it was yeah. nice. And then in the sun, it was hot, mm-hmm. but it was going behind clouds. So it was like, it was perfect. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. And I had the good idea where I knew it would be completely packed out. It'd be a nightmare. So I was like, let's take the Miata cause we can park. Anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Because there's going to be a dozen <laughs> spots where people are like, just can't fit there. Yeah. And I'll or just like, when people regularly park on, a, on the curb, you know, back to back, it's like, yeah, they squeeze in. They leave too much, too much space. And I'm like, ha <laughs> suckers. I can get a f- car that's six feet long in there yeah. all day. 
So I was like, let's take the Miata. It's just the two of us. And I want to be able to park right up front. And sure enough, man, we pulled up and like, I saw the line and I was like, and there's our spot just fit in. Neither one of those cars were going anywhere. Yeah. They don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I got right in my spot. I was like, that's perfect. Walked right in. And then of course, the first thing you do, we got a, we got a glass of wine. We started walking around then realized, oh shit, these lines are way too long. You get in the line, baby. I'll go get a bottle. Yeah. So then we drank a bottle of wine, waiting in line, got our food, finished our bottle of wine, decided to go inside and look at like the vendors and stuff. We'd already seen the dancing, done the food, had the wine, go inside vendors. And I'm like, a lot of cool stuff in here. And then back in the corner, there's this guy selling art and he's got so much art. All wife, kinds of art? All kinds of crazy art. like Sculptures, paintings. Mostly paintings. Uh-huh. Mostly paintings. But I mean, like, in every style. Mm-hmm. Velvet. Abstract, renaissance. <laughs> Dude, so it velvet, wasn't, wood, <laughs> you name it. It wasn't his art. Like, it was... So he had a huge section that was all his art. Uh-huh. And then he had another section from his gallery, uh-huh. in, like, in Texas. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? So, and, and I'm like, how do you even get here? And he's like, well, I'm, I lived here for years. Now my gallery's there, but I try not to miss the Greek fest. <laughs> I was like, okay. Of all things. So my wife has been trying to do this, um, this Western themed room. And she got some, like, she got like a big picture of a, of a fluffy cow. Is that because she fell in love with Texas when y'all were there? Literally. That's, that's exactly it happens. what happened. It yeah. happens. She she got her first real taste of like well done Western like furniture and yeah. art, and she was like, "We should do that in the music room." And I was like, "I'm not going to argue with you. Like that Did stuff you looks cool." Purchase a cow skull to mount on the wall with the no, horns. but out here I am going to get some. <laughs> that's the next thing I want to break this wall, and then I'm going to put longhorn yeah. in there. But that's a whole other. <laughs> that's a whole other topic because she's used to the country. The Country the way, chic. The way country people think they are country in the greater Richmond area. Yes. And so our house has got a lot of country chic. Yeah. Now it's <laughs> now we have one room that's all Western. And I, I'll be damned if I'm not looking. And there's this one painting of a cow. And it's like, it was done on wood. Like he mm-hmm. took wood and lay, laid it together. And then he built a frame out of another another piece of wood. And then he painted the wood. And he made this like cow painting. And I was like, man, that's really cool. And I'm like, well, how much is that? And he's like, five hundred dollars. And I, w- I was just talking to my wife. I go, if it's under two fifty, I'm buying it. And he goes, five hundred dollars. And I'm like, buy that's a, that's a little, little pricey for my blood. Oh, I see where this is going. And then he had another one. He had this, <laughs> he had this gigantic painting of a cowboy. And I'm like, how much for the cowboy? And he's like, fifteen hundred. Holy shit! And I'm like, fuck, dude, two thousand dollars for this. I tell you what, make it three. I'll buy the room. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, I was like, all right, man. Well, you know, I appreciate it. I mean, we're probably going to keep looking. And he's like, well, I mean, do you want to make an offer? And I was like, dude, you don't want my offer. You don't want me to insult you. Yeah. I go, I will literally pay you 600 for both. And he goes, done. Call it seven. No. Oh, wow. And I go, <laughs> well, okay. Oh, he got <laughs> He got you. He got hook, me. Line he and knew. Two. Got me. He, he knew, knew he was never getting two grand for those two pieces. Yeah, you know the funny thing is, I went on his website, and the the one big painting of the cowboy is on his website for fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. So it's until like a, you make him an offer, until you make him an offer that yeah. he can't refuse. Yeah. Because it's two hundred more than he ever thought he'd get. Exactly. For the two. So I was like, he's like, I gotta pay gas for coming up here from Texas. <laughs> yeah. So now, now I'm feeling like I stole it. Right? Yeah. So I'm like. Hell yeah. He's like, you got any cash? I was like, I got a hundred bucks cash. He's like, yeah. And I'm thinking, am I getting a discount? He's like, nah, but I just need some cash. Yeah. With his like missing teeth. <laughs> oh, there it comes out. Now we know. <laughs> but then like, he like signed it on the back, like to us and everything. Yeah. I was like, I was feeling pretty special. Then it hits me as I have this gigantor painting and this other giant. Oh, you're wooden, in the Miata. A fucking Miata. I can't get this stuff home. <laughs> yeah. So now I've got them wrapped and like I could barely carry them. Yeah. And like I'm walking out and I'm like, oh, baby, we got are these. Are these bigger than a poster? Dude. The- Dude, the, the cowboy paintings that size of that. No, no, it's bigger than that. Well, yeah, it's at least that big. No, I yeah. haven't seen the cow one. The cow one is that size. So that's 2448. Yeah, no, the cowboy one is probably about 
between five and six feet tall. Wow. And okay. then that wide. frame is bigger than 2448, I think. But it's a big, the cowboy one is big. It It's, it's large. Because the Miedo is 30 by 30, right? <laughs> so yeah. my wife's like, well, maybe we can get it in there. And then I like, I'm like, all right, well, we walked it out. And like, I'm looking at it and like, it's not physically possible. She's like, well, we'll just drop the top and I'll hold them. And I was like, what? It's $700 of art. That yeah. We're going to go Good drive down the out. road and just, yeah. I was like, absolutely not. Stretch the canvas. We can't do that. <laughs> and she's like, well, my feet hurt. Like, I can't, I can't walk these. And I was like, I'll tell you what. Take the Miata, get to the closest bar restaurant, and go sit at the bar, and I'll walk these to you. Now, it wasn't... What's, what's what does that get? Oh, you're going to walk them to her, and then she's going to sit Then I'll take them? it home, yeah. get a bigger car, come back, <clears throat> load them up. I did not realize how difficult it would be. That to probably c- took a long time. It took a very long time. I'm yeah. just walk. I'm walking across the highway, like over the overpass. Oh yeah, because it's just pieces of art. Yeah. I had to go into Carrytown. What yeah, was it? What's up? What day was it? It was Sunday. Sunday. And by this point of the day, all the clouds had gone away. And the, heat, <laughs> yeah. the heat came out. I had a sweatshirt tied around my, my waist. And I was just sweating. I was having to take breaks every block. You couldn't call anybody? I, yeah. I don't I didn't want to rely on it. What am I gonna call Stu and he shows up in his Miata? Not helpful. It could take one picture each. No, yeah. I just I just <laughs> I just wanted to get it done. Like I didn't want to wait around. I was like, nah, I can do this. I'm a man. That hurt. That Damn. Hurt. Oh, my God, dude. And then I get to the bar, and she's in there, which I will give her this. I walked in. I told her. I was like, look, when I get to that bar, just have a beer waiting for me. And I walked in. And so after the, the art's there, I walk in, you know, and I come walking over. Carrying all this art. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the waitress goes, hey, dude, bro, and hands me my beer. It's the first time I've heard anybody use my pronouns. Nice. Hey, dude, bro. Yeah. Because <laughs> whenever people say, what are your pronouns? Yeah, I, say, yeah. I say, dude, bro. Yeah. And she goes, hey, dude, bro. <laughs> Handed me my beer. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. I was like, this woman knew my pronouns. So my, my, that's how long my wife had had yeah. to yeah. talk with her. So, so what, you, damn. I'm still surprised you could fit them in there without your wife in there. What do you mean? No, he walked them. Yeah, I walked them. Oh, and then, and then he then took the le- car. Then you left the art in the bar with your wife. Yes, Jesus. And, went, and then I went, and then I drove home. What a debacle! Got the car, got the truck, drove back in the truck, walked in, dude, bro, boom, have a beer. I was. Like, I bet she yes. was feeling all right by the time you got back there. Yeah, she was feeling <laughs> great. She was feeling great, and I was like, well, I can continue to drive. Yeah, because <laughs> I've only had one beer now. Yeah, I had had the bottle of wine with her, but then I'd taken quite the break. Yeah. You know, Spending money circling and the walking. city, <laughs> yes, and circumnavigating the city, only to come home and now find out that in my mind all of this art would go great in the room, and now she's like, "Well, none of the other art now works." Yeah. So now the cow painting I bought is going upstairs. The cowboy's staying, but now the other art that we already had has to come out. She's rearranging. This whole weekend has now turned into me rearranging the room, but then I added another piece of art. You're just a collector now. Yeah. Yes. So I bought something art like also over the weekend <laughs> that I'd wanted. Where was I, this at? Well, this was something that I'd I had shown her. This whole weekend was just the money flew out my ass. This yeah, it was horrible. So there's something that I have coveted for. How'd a you get the years. rest of the money for dude? For Which, the art dealer? No, I, to- I I swiped. Oh, okay. Six hundred and gave him a hundred cash. He just wanted, yeah. It sounded like he wanted all cash. He did, and I was like, "That's not going to work." And he's like, "Do you have any cash?" I guess he probably has to pay. Oh yeah, he's got top. Like you you pay cash, and that Mm -hmm. art never happened. You pay credit. He's got to be like, "All right, three three percent to the credit card machine company." Yeah. Yeah. Now it's taxable income. Yeah, he's got to claim it. All of the above. (laughs) So, but there was something else that I picked up this weekend that I bought. I have wanted for a long time. And that's something called a Sisyphus table. Syphilis table? A syphilis table. Ooh, is that the one that is that the one that spins and opens up? No. That sounds like a aperture of sorts. Yeah, that's right. Okay. No, no. So Sisyphus is a guy who cheated death in Greek mythology. And, and so he, he You're just Greek themed. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's the Greek fest. Yeah. So, <laughs> Greek Western. Yeah. 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 Western. Greek, Greek Western chic. That's what we're going for yeah. in here. Or weak. 
Yeah. Western Greek. <laughs> is this is this the uh is this the family room? Off the dining room? Yeah. <laughs> the music so, room is the music room. So get it right, Stu. So the so Sisyphus in uh in Greek mythology is, is a guy who cheated death and the Greek gods were so upset that he had pulled this off. So now he gets to live for eternity. So they were like, fine, you live for eternity. You now have a job. And every day your job is to push a boulder. Oh, he's the push in the boulder. He up pushes there. the boulder up the mountain and it takes him all day and he gets it to the top and then he gets to sleep. And then when he wakes up the next morning, the boulders at the bottom of the mountain and he begins pushing it right back up the mountain. And this is his entire life for eternity. Every day. So he is a middle-aged dad? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Just do the same thing over and over and over. over. So a Sisyphus table is a table that has sand in it, like a Japanese Zen garden. Yeah. and That real fine powder looking sand. Yeah. And it's got a marble in it. There it is. Well, But his is a a table, like. It's a yeah, but that's that's the idea. So it's got a marble in it with a magnet underneath, and a mechanism that's like stupid precise. Yeah, and it moves that marble slowly through the sand and creates geometric shapes and images and all kinds of crazy stuff. And people from the community they like send in like all different kinds of crazy patterns that it can do, and it's got it's got LED lights that change colors and can follow the ball around. It's and it's, it's a, all on your app. Yeah, it's all on your app. It's it's pretty sick. But I've been watching these things, like time lapses of it on YouTube for years. And I'm like, I got to get one of these Sisyphus tables. And I showed it to my wife over the weekend. I never showed it to her because it's inherently the kind of thing that I think she would say, that's stupid. Why do you even like that kind of stuff? So I just never showed it to her. It's just been like my own little kink. Yeah. I always okay. thought your wife, like, was the type of person that when you like something, she'd be like, yeah, go buy it. Some things. Other things, she's <laughs> like, you're stupid. I just assumed this was going to be. That's, a, that's <clears throat> a big difference between. Yes, uh, definitely a big difference. I assumed she was going to be, you're stupid. She can, took one can it look- be both? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not mutually exclusive now that you say it. I've definitely heard You're like, stupid, but if you want to buy it, go for it. I think the Miata was a perfect example. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, that's stupid. That's an old little roadster. But I'll ride in it. But I'll go. Yeah. yeah. I'm down. Yeah. But so she took one look at this thing and she goes, oh, that's really cool. And I was like, that was all I had to hear. I was like, really? And I was like, it's like $3,000 cool? Because that's what the coffee table costs. And she's like, it's not that cool. And I was like, end table? And showed her that price. She's like. It's probably that cool. It's your money. You know, I was yeah. Like, yeah. done. So I ordered that thing. So this was a big art weekend all going into the same room. Dude, so you've got was this. Was it like delivered via Amazon? Do you no, have it yet? FedEx. Yeah. Got it today. I mean, set it up. It looks pretty, uh, like too fragile to move like that. It came in a big old box and it's like, they had done this thing right. Packaged it up right. Yeah. It was, it was well done. So you've got Western art. A Greek theme with Sisyphus, and then this table that's off of Sisyphus, but it looks more like feng shui, zen, yes. Japanese In the inside, ball sand. But the one I got is like, it's black, black wrought iron, like, and then it's like a dark wood mm-hmm. around and top. So it, it fits kind of a Western theme. The cowboy like, is right over oh, the okay. table. He's watching. Yes. He's yes. Like, well, his back's turned, he's, so he's not really watching. Yeah, and the colors are changing and beaming up onto the new art yeah it's a whole thing it's it's what we like to call in the industry an installation it's an art installation stuff. okay it's moving it's, art uh. it's moving art but all right so, so you went in and saw <laughs> and in the corner he's got his kids taped to the wall yeah <laughs> they're, the kids. they're running around way too much you're not sorry kids week. your shit can't go up in this room <laughs> that's right you're amateurs but you saw it i saw it it's pretty cool it is cool yeah i mean so, like, and I know you immediately were like, "You're a moron." I sent you a picture of it. You were like, "You're an idiot." You've got it. You, I think you said, "I'm worried about you." I think you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, I said you. You're sick and you have a disease, and I worry about you. What yes. I'm, what I'm more worried about is, don't you need a matching set? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. End table, you yeah. Right? right? I, I didn't. It cut off, but I was going to say you only bought one 
of all the dumb things you could possibly do. <laughs> That's why you thought I was. Yeah, sick. yeah, yeah. Got it. It's lonely in there. It needs a buddy. Okay. And a matching coffee table. <laughs> do I even want to ask the price? Yeah. Half of what you said earlier, right? I believe it could be more. It could be more. It was it was half of what I said earlier. Yeah, <laughs> it was it, more yeah. than that. <laughs> no, from no, I got a deal. He said three fifteen. Oh, you made a deal on there? No, I got it. I had a code. Oh, oh. Mm. very good deal. Did, is it an Amazon purchase or is it? No, like it's a, from Sisyphus. Industries. There's a Sisyphus like ah yeah. So there are generic ones that have been made. Yeah, but they are not the Sisyphus. Of course not. Tape. No, even mm. if you're gonna buy one. No, you buy the buy real, the real one. Because this is like there's a community around. Made it. by Sisyphus himself. That's right. Still, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Still pushing the ball. When yeah. he's done, when he gets to the top of the hill, he works the rest of the night making these tables. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. For eternity. Yeah. We're yeah, churning these, them out over here. <laughs> these things originally started as art installations in museums. Like this guy created the technology, and like 20 years ago, he was setting them up, and it would just do its thing. In, in museums and people yeah. would stare at it and be like, that's amazing. And then he thought, you know, I could probably make more money if I could sell it to more people. Yeah. And that's when he made the first big table. And then he started making the end tables. And How many different Ooh. versions are there? Look at that's the one. That's the $2,300 table. Yeah. That's the big one. That's the metal coffee table, but that's the same look of what I, I is have. tall and thin. It's like this big around. I have yeah. the end table. It's 14 inches of exposed sand, I believe, is what I see. Exposed. Yeah. Exposed. Okay. But it's like probably 20 inches wide because of the rim and all so, that. So you just bought this on a whim after you paid off a ton of debt. Yeah. So you spent at least two Gs on it. Yep. That's mine. Two Gs this weekend on art, if not 25 hundy. Just over two grand. Yeah. Okay. Just over it. Table was fifteen hundred plus the seven hundred. So yeah. I mean you do the math. <laughs> the, the, the bottle of wine, food, the walk. The bar tab. <laughs> the bar tab. <laughs> I'm sure that was cheap. <laughs> yeah. I mean Hey, make it a weekend. It's uh it was expensive. It was expensive. So I fell off the wagon. It's cool looking. I'll give yeah. you that. It's cool. And I guarantee I'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it just staring yeah. at it. Like, it was pretty mesmerizing when you showed it to me. It's it's like I mean I find myself out here just staring at the fish tank. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same concept. It's yeah. just now so have that inside. The app that controls it can is like different programs that for the art itself that it draws. Yeah, I mean or is I it have, just random or no, I have thousands of, of shapes and patterns that I can like tell it to do. But there's full communities like on Reddit and then they have a forum where they, they have this like software where you can take an image and then you can like plot it out through the software and then it will draw whatever it is you want. The whole trick is the ball has to start and end in the same, same spot in the same spot. So you just have to, the software so just figures over, out how yeah. to do it all. It's an you overpaid etch a sketch. Pretty much. It's basically an etch a sketch <laughs> yeah. actually. It's just that the the machine is doing it, and I mean yeah, it is precise. Yeah. I mean there oh, are etch yeah. a table, etch a table. You should uh, figure out how to do like something profane. Oh, I for do, funsies. So, so the first thing I did, I turned it on, and it started drawing something, and I was like, I don't want this, and I like I switched to another one, and I hit it, and I looked down, and my daughter and I were standing there, and it had made a perfect cock and balls. <laughs> 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 And I was like, oh, man, that looks like a dick. And my, my, uh, my daughter goes, <laughs> I didn't want to say it. That's hilarious. <laughs> so you know what I was just thinking is you said there's a community of people that have these tables. Nerds. So um, what is it? Sisyphites. Touch, uh, <laughs> the the touch tune jukeboxes that are in bars. Yeah. So, you know, you pay to play a song. You use your app. But you can also find where all the other touch tunes are. And you can order a song in somebody else's bar and play a song that you want to listen to there. Oh, interesting. I wonder if I could like have somebody. If you had a community, like if everybody has an etch table. Why in God's name would you pay a, play a song somewhere else? To annoy people. 
Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> I'm thinking of it practically, and everybody else is like, I want to be an asshole. Let's no, Rick like, roll this motherfucker. Yeah, it's going to be oom bop yeah. all the time. Yeah, Actually, right. you know, Rick roll is probably yeah. perfect. Yeah. You play yeah. American Pie four times in a row, that's an hour that they can't get back. Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. So, this no, is the 14th your... <laughs> time I've heard tequila in a row. No, the only, because <laughs> the, the bar we go to a good bit, uh, there's somebody in town at another bar that always plays the Bohemian Rhapsody covered by the Muppets. Oh God! No and one comes- uses this power for good, right? Like <laughs> no. no one's like. But this is my-, <laughs> my favorite song. I want to introduce it to someone else. No, it's no but, he but, on a, by the but on a cool side, can you imagine if you had the tables Why shared with the, the app, choice? and you could you could say, "I want to send this to so and so." Like yeah. the community's like, "Oh, this is what I'm having done." There's people on Reddit shared. where like you can send them an image, and then they'll create, they'll do this the program, and then like link it out so everyone can have it, and okay. so. And they seem to do this every once in a while. Like, these dudes don't have anything to do. And they'll be like, no. send an image in, and I'm going to pick one tonight and do it. The only and problem I, I see with your table is, is when you turn the bass up on your speakers for the record, it's going to vibrate that sound Ooh, all over the place. That could be a problem. <clears throat> that actually has crossed my mind. <laughs> we shall see. I already yelled at the kids once for bumping into it. And I, was yeah. like, uh. I was like, oh, the precision line is, uh, I fell. <laughs> so wait, is there like tools to like, rake it keep it clean or you just like let it start over and just i can but it seems like every every like fifth time it takes the ball direct to center and then does like really small concentric circles and like just does a clean sweep yeah yeah and then it just starts over starts over like sisyphus Mm. well expensive weekend i'm glad you got your new toy at least it's something you can see your money at work It'd yeah, be cool it's, it's if not could, like it's just. It'd be cooler if it was wall mounted. Obviously, it would never work because you know gravity. Yeah, but like, then you could see it. Yeah, more. you could like sit on the couch yeah. and look across the room and watch it go. This guy just he just came out or it's coming out. He's got a Kickstarter going. <laughs> it's called a mirror at a forty five degree angle right mm-hmm. above it. No, he's got one that's it. rectangular now. There's like a true coffee table because everything's been circular because yeah. it just makes more sense mm-hmm. for the ball. And he has figured out how to recreate it now in rectangle form and this one's getting probably an app you can do on your tv that'll actually do the whole damn thing probably you, you can just, just sit there and watch it oh yeah just watch somebody it record TV. their sister <laughs> yeah no that's not but look that's... <laughs> <laughs> let's turn it over there that tv looks great it's not being yeah. used <laughs> it's, it's the whole fireplace concept but people do that <laughs> with the yeah. yule log burning on the yeah, tv yeah. <laughs> they do that oh man uh, i refuse <laughs> I see what you're saying. Stu, don't YouTube Sisyphus and, no, I'm find, and find something, <laughs> find a million options to it's watch. It's probably there. <laughs> I guarantee it is. It is. It's got to be there. I do like, like you can like, you can like crank the ball speed up and make it go super fast, which is really nerve wracking. They need it's to like, do a reverse one. So you look like at the bottom of a fish tank, like on the ceiling and oh, no, no, that that's actually, where all the mechanism is. Yeah. But bottom. if you can do it. Yeah. But what if you put it at the top? The, the ball like, is resting in the sand. I know, but, but what it, if the magnet was at the top and powerful, and so the ball was sticking to the magnet and drawing through? Oh, no, because that wouldn't work. Well, if the sand's thin, it'd just be drawing a line the, on the glass. Who knows? There'd have to be no gap between the top and the bottom. Yeah, it would not True. work. Yeah, mm. that's what I was getting at. It would just not work. That's a thought. Stu, I like your brainstorming. You keep it up. I, mean, I was, yeah. I was all in. I had five on it for a second, there. for a second, yeah. And then Troy, Troy had to jump in with logic, science, and logic. I'm, that's on me, guys. It's messed up. My bad. You mm-hmm. and your logic. Well, and, are so, you back on the wagon? Yes, I have no choice. Because now I feel bad. So here's the loophole that I've been finding: is I've been like, like the Sisyphus table. I bought. With my with PayPal, which Fake actually money. no no it actually came directly out of my bank account. Oh okay. So I you didn't have a bank of money in PayPal. No. Yeah. So like, it it just came out like it didn't go to a credit card. So that debt still <laughs> okay. But I also have less resources to put towards the credit card debt. Yeah. But in my mind, yeah, that made sense. You're not carrying the debt. Yeah, that was mm. so. There is still there has been a little shift, but it's still not. It was not a good weekend for me. I'm back on the wagon. Yeah. Yes. I am cleaning it up. There not, you go. Not, no more money spending. Can't wait till next week. It's going to all have to wait <laughs> for a little while. Well, I'm, getting ready, month. I'm getting ready to sell this uh, car. 
I don't need a car. <laughs> Are you really going to sell your car? Yeah. The Fiat? Yeah. Oh, no. I did just, well. But I need to talk to your dad. I was going to say, we'll talk because I think my dad might actually want that. Um, kids are a pain in the ass. That's what's driving it. Oh, yeah. you mean the kids driving it are a pain in the ass or the fact that no, you can't fact, carry I, any of them? <laughs> no, I'm just, uh, I'm going to do, I'll probably get back into a Fiat in maybe a year or so, but I'm going to do some switching around to make uh, everybody have a car. Oh, and you I got to supply need my, a car. To yeah, get, I need a supply yeah, car yeah. and I, the stick shift is not practical for only one person out of six that can drive it. Yeah. So it's like, eh. well, they can also tighten the fuck up and learn how to drive stick shift. I don't want to take the time and burn the clutch out. I'm with you. <laughs> I have no desire for my kids to learn. How I've, to and before I know I even, it's Brendan, it's important to Brendan, but yeah, it's getting harder to find cars with a stick shift. And, and then nowadays they charge you more when you want to go. Yeah. manual. They'll say, yeah. okay, it's a 700, $1,200 upgrade, which is crazy. Your, which is like, oh, but well, it's a dead art. I mean, there's yeah. no, yeah, they're not making them. Yeah. So you're learning how to speak and read Sanskrit. Literally. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great yeah. analogy. I mean, but it's, it's cool, for the people but, that like, sure. But it's for the people that like to drive, which no one's going to drive soon. Yeah. I mean, cars will be <laughs> auto driving. Yeah. It's, and we're not too far off from like, yeah. Kids that are born today will never know how to drive. Speaking of cars, you know, so, I, you know, I got a Jeep nine and a half months ago, and, and I saw it's missing doors tonight. Yeah, I took the doors off. <laughs> <laughs> missing doors? No, no, no. That's intentional. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I told the story real quick. I've wanted a Jeep my whole life. Finally, could afford one that was not a bucket of rust and a you know shit show. But I don't. We I think we have we talked about the whole ducking thing and how how stupid it is and we yeah, yeah. we've touched on and it. how people like bastardize jeeps with like crazy They're amount awful. of yeah. aftermarket crap that basically it all started with the mean eye the yeah angry yeah eye. the angry grill but and, jeeps started it with their their little Easter eggs all over them yeah but it hit me the other day. I literally have bought my dream car at the absolute worst time. And I'm part of the problem because the problem started with the four door Jeep. That's right. That's mm. where like it went from a cool, rugged thing. You could do off road stuff with to like, you know, that was impractical. So it kept people out of it. Yeah. Like you didn't, th- yeah. if it was your daily driver, you were single and or married with no kids. Like, yeah, it, it wasn't a good practical car, but when they made it a four door, now it's like a, a mall crawler and people buy just the ugliest aftermarket crap and take what literally makes a Jeep look cool is the design of it with the with the grill with the seven slots. And yeah, it's it like, super cool. And then it's Still like is. they take all that crap off and put funky yeah. colored stuff on it and ducks and just yeah. ruin it. And it's like it's so heartbreaking to me that. Now I am driving what... Yeah, but you can't hate on yourself for having a cool car because everyone else sucks. Yeah, but everybody, you know, the whole Jeep wave thing and all the, like, corny shit, everybody thinks they're, like, best friends with anyone else who owns a Jeep. And it's like, I want no parts of these people. <laughs> so when I had a Jeep, it was so rare to see a Jeep yeah. that the Jeep wave was really special. I mean, yeah. I really liked it. I was like, oh. And there was a hierarchy, up, like... Like, like CJs were the best. Yeah. Then there was the square YJ. Yeah. yeah. And then I had the round. And there was also like, but then do how you lifted? still have the little like light truck tires on it, you know, or do you exactly. have like some 33s? Like you're cooler. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you can, you could, Jeeps have always been the most uh, modern, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Modified. Modified vehicles. Yeah. Like you could always buy, but it was always like cool shit. Now it's like, I need purple door hinges. Like what? Yeah, what, like, and now they everyone puts like a different name on the. Oh uh, yeah, they the, all name the side they, of the they hood. name their hood. You know, they like name their gamer Jeep. chick. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, and at first time I saw him, I was like, oh, I didn't even know that edition existed. Yeah, like the Apache. yeah, because like, yeah, yeah. that's cool. But then I saw like gamer chick, and I was like, I know they didn't release a gamer yeah. chick edition. Right? No, they didn't. Yeah, they name them all. They're all stupid. It's unoriginal. Like. It's just awful the stuff they do to them now, and they don't the, even look like Jeeps hardly anymore. Well, the one thing that I wish the manufacturer would have done different is not put the damn street tires on it. Yeah, but they've always. I mean, done they've that. always done yeah. it, but you're like, because you can do no, you can have the you can do nothing to a Jeep and just change the tires out, and it's completely yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, that was the beauty of it. Yeah, I was like, 
You and don't need to. You don't need to. When to you're talking, point, you don't street, need to buy all the modify. Okay, yeah, it, it, it's got great things going for it by itself. When you're talking street <clears> tires, do you mean like the stock little tires, or do you mean how they have the new high altitude no, editions? No, 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 that no are not like the high actual altitude. street tires with no, rims. No, not the rim. No, the, okay, because they've because made those that are like literally for the city. Yeah, like they're never supposed to go off road, but right, they, I they think those no tre- actually look cool. I really do. Well, it's just the tread and the the higher rim, yeah. bigger rim. But no, I mean like a a, a mud tire. I've always that's not you know I'm, I'm fourteen st- inches wide. Yeah. I'm still surprised that cars. My wife's car is a CRV, nothing special, but it has the ugliest plain uh, rims. She on has it. steelies, yeah, like old school mm-hmm. steelies. Yeah. And I'm like, for another grand, you could have made that car look so much better. Like I can't believe hubcaps and steelies and all these yeah. standard things are still a. But some people are cheap. Yeah, like but if you're going to change it all out, it makes well sense to buy it with steelies. And get some spinners. Yeah, but nobody's <laughs> buying a CRV and doing that. You know what I'm saying? No, that like, person was just like, oh, I, I really need to save yeah. that $1,000. Yeah. Give me the steel. But it shouldn't even be an option because your Honda, that's your product. That's the billboard it it you're throwing stupid. out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, we had a, de- and it's not a bad looking car, but it's like, we had a decent looking car, a practical yeah. car going, but guess what? We just stopped right here. Honda, but, Honda kills me though, with because you said your the um, the uh, the original Ridgeline Honda pickup truck. Yeah, that was when it first came out. And I was like, oh my god, that doesn't look like a truck at all. Yeah, fucking sucks. Whatever. I think. And then hands. three years later, they used the Honda Odyssey chassis, the minivan, and they. Change that, that to the, all now. Way. It's the Ridgeline. Yeah. So it's basically because when you see a Ridgeline now, it's a minivan. It's a, a minivan. Four door front. It's a minivan. And it's like yeah. that's not even a. You guys are just shit in the bed. <laughs> They're keeping it cheap. Yep. Same reason they put Steelys on it so they can say yeah. starting. Yeah. At that price. Yeah. But know. anyway, that was a hurtful revolution I had to have with myself. I'm sorry. I still love my Jeep, but it's a good looking you Jeep. Should. It's yeah. just sad that it's been bastardized to the nth degree. They don't care, though, because profits are through the roof. Yeah, that's a fact. And I, I want the Gladiator, which yeah. is also a bastardization of a Jeep. Yeah, but all the stock versions of all the Jeeps are better than when you start. Now, I I do think you can modify it and make it look still have look like a Jeep, right? Like, that's the point. Yeah. But, like, some of them are awful, man. Just pure awful. Well, I think, what is it, Dodge and Chevy, they now offer... The manufacturer lift and yeah, which bigger really, tires that you really get from did. them. Well, so Chevy, Dodge, I mean, that's and what Jeep. The Jeep does it too. Well, it's Dodge, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then Ford just has the different. I don't know that they offer it, but like the Raptor is lifted. Yeah, you know, yeah. They have trim levels that are lifted. But you're right. You can go into a Dodge dealership and be like, no, and I want you to put a lift on it. Because yeah. a lot of the people that modify these vehicles, they they're doing it all wrong. And the and the car is just not made to handle it. Oh, no, I learned that in my Jeep. The first <laughs> yeah. lift I ever put on, I got like the spacer, which basically just at the top of the leaf spring. Yep. Yeah. Not the leaf spring, the actual coil, the actual spring. It uh, it just put a block that raised it about yeah. two inches, and they were like, "You get to keep your suspension." I was like, "That's fantastic." I was like, "I can't believe I got away with this so cheap." They're still very popular. They I was, might be better now. I was driving down the road and. What they don't tell you is that it changes the the drive drive shaft angle. Yeah. Like everything comes up, so your drivetrain's not right. You kill your transmission. I snapped a U bolt <laughs> going down the road, yeah. and the whole drive shaft is like tonk 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 slam. And I was like, "What just happened?" It turns out it's a hundred and fifty dollars to install. That's what it would have cost to install it. Yeah, like the part is seventy five, and it's seventy five dollar installation where they just drop your your drivetrain down just a little bit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then everything straight. Everything's back to geometric. And you have no issues. Why Nobody didn't they tell that? me that? Yeah. I got it done professionally. And they should have been like, oh, we should drop your transfer case an inch. It'll keep the geometry right. And you'll never break. They didn't offer me that for the $150. I would have paid that. Right, because they know it's going to break and you come back and pay them to repair it. And then it cost me far <laughs> more because I had to put yeah. that in. And I had to get a new U-Bolt. And I had to fix all the yeah. things that it had tonked the tonked into. Yeah. Mm. I was like, oh, that was cool. Hey, I need. we need do need to get to that. Is it deli. deli time? Deli time? It's past deli time. Nice. You went on your Jeep tirade right before I was about to throw it to Delhi. So now we're. <laughs> but speaking of, this beer is super exciting. This guy. Uh oh. The the guy drinking this beer would have the fucked out Jeep. Hundred percent, and that's why I thought it was a really nice tie-in. 
So, so tonight, are you, are you jealous of the we fact are, that they've made a ton of money? We are debuting. <laughs> this, this has got to be a bestseller. I've never even seen it. Nobody's seen it. It doesn't exist, but I found it. It is Salt Life Lager. Oh. It's got the Salt Life it is font. The salt and the Life, sh- yeah. Like. Do, do you, you don't have any intro music for this? What should be playing in the background? Dude. Sweet Home Alabama. I don't know what you... <laughs> a Kenny Chesney file clock somewhere. It says Salty State of Mind. Salt Life Lager. And of all of the fishing brands, you've got your Huck, you got your PFG, your performance fishing yep. gear. You know, and then you go salt. down the line and you have Salt Life, which is like what you can pick up in every shitty store where they do airbrush t shirts and all the crap. I think Salt Life is by far oh my God. the worst of all the fishing brands. You know where it's made? It's got to be in Florida. Abita Springs, Louisiana. Oh, that it's actually Abita, makes sense. It's Abita beer. Yeah. Oh, gosh, it could be good. <laughs> Abita makes great it, beer. It says American well, Lager, flavor, I mean, crisp, clean, refreshing. It is I mean, 4.5 ABV. I mean, the Gulf of Mexico, I mean, Fisherman's Paradise is on the license plate all over Louisiana. Jeez Louise. I mean, how funny is that? Salt life. This is extreme, <laughs> dude. I'm fired up. Salt life. Beverage, brood and Ooh. Beer. Tastes like a jacked up Jeep. Every guy in my hometown will drink the shit out of this when they hear about it. Hell yeah, dude. It's salt life lager. Oh, no. Stu's face lit up like it's the like, redneck he is. Salt Life is like the brand for like everyone who lives way inland, but they go, they rent a house in the Outer Banks for a week every year. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, Doc. <laughs> Look at me. I, I get it. <laughs> well, what does Abita makes? Purple Haze. Purple Haze and a ton of... Ton of beers, yeah, but Abita's done good. They I haven't year. I haven't had a bad Abita. I mean, I can think of one, maybe one. Salt Life Lager. Oh, that's frustratingly. How tasty. expensive was that? And I I went to Lucky. Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. everything three dollars more. Way too much. It was eighteen ninety nine for a twelve pack. Hmm. That's actually which is a steal by Lucky standards. And I even said to the guy, I go. Have you been selling a lot of this? Yeah, because salt life in the, you know, I don't drink, but in Coors Light, eight seventeen ninety nine. No, that's no, no. It was for a case. No, that would be about what it costs there, though. Yeah, because the Lucky's charges thirteen dollars for a six pack of seltzer. Correct. Yeah, but like domestic beer is basically a dollar a pop, right? Twelve twenty five. Not in this place. This yeah, place, yeah. like Stu's, not wrong. It's around twelve dollars for a six pack. It's about two dollars yeah. a beer. So this was actually a pretty good deal. Yeah, they're marketing a dollar for convenience. And I said to him, I go, I go, I go, are you selling a lot of this Salt Life Lager? Is, have you heard any any reviews? And he said, No, we just got it last week. Which <clears throat> I saw they got it last week, hey, and I it? passed over it. And the same two twelve packs were sitting there. And he goes, I know it's expensive. And I was like. And I said, well, isn't all beer expensive? And I think he took it like, isn't all your, your beer, beer overpriced? Because yeah. he got this look on his face. And I was like, <laughs> okay, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that, the, is that the owner guy? Yeah. Oh, because the, the, have you met the guy that's a taller, blonde, slick back hair? He works in the evenings. Yeah. White guy. Mm-hmm. He wants to do M4K with us. I've talked to him, met him. Good. Just FYI. He's in. He sounds <clears throat> we all right. need. A lucky hookup. <clears throat> yeah, that's not going to help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is officially the redneck ocean beer. But this is like mm-hmm. fancy rednecks. This is... Rednecks no, this with is, some disposable income. What were yeah. those shirts that everybody wore for the longest time? Like the UFC. There's like the Tom Hardy shirt. Oh, is that the uh, right? affliction. 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 This is the affliction <laughs> of fishing, in my mind. Well, it doesn't matter if you... You you got to spend some money to get out in the Gulf and do it. To, oh yeah, no, to no. Me, but this uh, is to me. Huck and Salt Life and PFGs all one and the same. Like you might, the guy might have all those things on at the same time. So this is fun. my wife and I had this argument a little while ago because when we were on the cruise, I was like, I respect Huck, then PFG. I like I, I was pointing out, I was like, I like a, uh, Avid, yeah, mm-hmm. A V I D. 
I like that gear. And my lowest on the food chain is Salt Life. Like, Does Salt Life never... even have gear? I know they yes. make like yeah, hats. And... Yeah. I feel like stickers are their main. <laughs> yeah, but no, they also have. Okay. They also do fishing gear. Yeah. But that's my, my hierarchy is probably. Huck's got to be the best. I don't buy it. I don't know. Well, I'm sure like Columbia is better. There's probably well, Columbia better. makes PFG. Okay. So that was like, it was Columbia. Yeah. And then they just. Change, they, they were calling it Columbia Performance Fishing Gear, yeah. and then they just shortened it to PFG, and that became its thing. I just looked up like Salt Life, just background on the company. As of the 21st of this year, Salt Life founder Michael Hutton admits to shooting his dead teenage girlfriend yeah, in see, a that's, play gunfight. That's precisely We've the all Salt been Life. there. Wait, what? <laughs> that's the Salt Life yeah. right there. <laughs> this guy is... <clears throat> Admits, 56-year-old, admits to I'm treating sure his teenage girlfriend in an accidental oh, yeah. play gunfight. Accidental play gunfight. I love that Stu was trying to look up something, I'm sure, about salt. And yeah, the first yeah. thing he found was, owner shoots teenager. Oh, Fuck. <laughs> well, that's what you're going to find. Teenage girlfriend. That's even worse. I I, I didn't I didn't miss that. Okay. I, I heard that, too. 56 and a teenager. Mm. No. That's the salt life, baby. Yeah. Not good. Salt life. You're how old? Bang. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Salt life. This can't get out. <laughs> yeah, salt life. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh. Okay. Oh, All right. Well. Well. Mm. We have thoroughly trashed salt life. Like we have. We have beaten the brakes off them. Like I, don't, this, I don't. I don't. Like this guy probably did his girlfriend before he shot mm, her. Yeah. Dead bodies don't bruise. <laughs> Science. Science is Salt right. Life. Yeah. Salt life. Take that. Does that fit on the back of a shirt? <laughs> dead bodies don't bruise. Dude, it's like it's a version of Dead Man Telling the Tales. Yeah, Trade yeah. trait Salt, <laughs> Salt life. Salt <laughs> life. Uh, Kings of the Menu would ask you to turn that shirt inside out. <laughs> yeah, dude. You shit, can't wear sell that. that shit. I bought a 12 pack of this and then I raised the front end of my car, but yeah, I left the back. That's right. Carolina Squad. Carolina that squad. Bitch quick. Uh, Salt Life. That's Salt right. Life. That's how it's done. Jeez Louise. Sticker takes up the whole back window. The whole day. Well, I don't want to be able to see out the back window. Yeah. I already can't see over my hood. Yeah. Except so, so because of that damn so Texas up. cowboy painting. And you got to let those guys know <laughs> what, what life you're about. So are I'm, you about regular life? No. No. I don't know if you noticed. Are you about lake life? No. No. What kind of life are you about? Salt bro? life. Yes, exactly. <laughs> for life. For Salt life for life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go off the fucking rails and give this a four. Oh, God. Yeah. Salt life. <laughs> <laughs> the, the marketing is simple. They don't have a lot on the can. They're, they're catering to the exact market they need to. And it's actually a fucking good lager. I do have to say, like... No, it's surprisingly good. I do have to say about the whole Salt Life looking thing. Like, when I first saw that, I was like, that's, like, the, the font and everything. Of you're course. like, I mean, the pirate you're flag, like, this is that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then, so I saw my, the, then I saw the douches that had it, and I was like, I'm out. That's the thing. It's the yeah. douchiest of all of the ocean brands. Yeah. Yes, but if we start drinking it, then the socio-demographics go up. No, we just come down. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm arguing with my wife. I'm pulling out a gun. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what happened to you? I'm like, Salt Life! <laughs> We're playing gunfighting, remember? Yeah. Hold still. <laughs> yes. I'm going to do all kinds of play things. No, I'm surprised. I was surprised on the first sip. I'm still surprised on the middle sip. For a fucking 4.5% lager. That beer is fucking tasty. It's not bad. It's really clean and crisp and refreshing. No, it's, it's all those things. It's surprisingly good. It's and un- they didn't use the word crushable. It's unfortunate. <laughs> Dude, keep your hand off of that. I will not. <laughs> keep your hand off of that, Bell Troy. I am not. I am not giving this I'm a giving it a four. I am too. Oh, you are? Yes. <laughs> oh, my and, score and will not keep it from getting a deli then. I think it's really good. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, two fours? Yeah. Okay. Allow me to ding it a little. Okay. Okay. I'm going to drink it, and I'm going to describe what I taste. Okay. Give me all the bad first. There is no bad first, because it's a little bit sweet. It's a little, a little bit, bit refreshing. <laughs> a little bit salty. 
<laughs> not enough salt. Not enough salt. Yeah, no for, salt in it. For about to, for it to be about some that salt life. in this beer might be good. No, I'm just saying the same thing. The only thing it has, and this is the only dig. There's like a little kind of like metallic aftertaste, like they just kind of there. The well, distance. that can come from transportation. It can come from any number of things. Yeah, and only because of that, I was going to go three and a half. Because my yeah. first sip, when I tasted that sweet, refreshing flavor, I was like, is that a four? And then yeah. I got that little hint of it, and I was like, oh, thank God, I can ding it. But as I'm drinking it, like, it's hard to ding it much. This is this is on your next rafting down the river trip, easily. Yeah, That'll go a, nice in your Yeti cooler that's shaped like a kayak. Fuck yeah, salt life. <laughs> His stupid beer. River life. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go three and a half only because of that little aftertaste, which is fading with every sip. 3.8, 3, 3, 3, 3. And, and salt life. We're salt lifers. I mean, they, they're they they're not trying to oversell it. They're no. just keeping everything no, it simple. It looks like a government beer from the side. The flag on it's cool. Like yeah, Chris it's got cool the looking. shark fin, the swordfish. And I don't, this, what's that? Mean? That's the uh, no swimming. Uh, that's the, uh, that's the fishing. That's. And oh, that, that's rough water. Yeah, that's rough the rough water. water yeah, that's the flag. flag on the Short, front, right? Yeah. And the blue fin. Salt life, dude. Ring that bell. I never. We in never. A million <laughs> years. <laughs> it's basically just a better Budweiser. I mean, it is. But it what is, I'm trying to say is they're not trying to oversell it. Like no, it's but just, it's, no, they it's know a what basic they got. bitch. You know what it reminds me of? It's very basic. It's like a um a less effervescent. Uh, land shark lager, like you know how yeah. like Jimmy Buffett did the land yeah. shark. Yeah. Well, and land shark still has that Corona Mexican type. Corona vibe. Mexican yeah. vibe. This yeah. doesn't have that. You ever had Island beer? Mm-hmm. The one that's mm-hmm. just Island lager. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like you have your longboard lager. This falls in between like the Island and the longboard with like a hint of that um, Buffett vibe because it's yeah. Salt Life. Like, but it's it. Look, it's a bland beer. It's bland yeah. as shit. It's, yeah, there's not a lot going on. But in it. I would say, oh yeah, no, no some... notice we didn't say any tasting notes. No, no we no, said but, sweet but and easy getting, to drink. I was just getting ready to say though, there's a little bit more flavor to it because I think it's because of the less ABV. It's only four and a half. Most of your beers are like five, five two, five and a half. You let some of the the American lovers come through. They figured it out. They are, and this is American on it. Genius. This just a it's an basic. American lager. Hey Troy, USA, USA. Can I get another one of those? Yeah, salt you lives? want one. So kudos to Abita Brewing Company because Salt Life just paid Thank them you. to make them a beer and to put their label on. No, that's it. They said, "Hey, because we we Kendra, need a we do it all the time. We need a basic bitch beer. Yep, a real for, basic bitch beer. So it for should some be Louisiana golden. redneck and fishing guys out in the Gulf. Yeah, it should be <laughs> it should be golden in color." Right. It should be reminiscent of every beer they're willing to drink. I don't want it to have any flavor, <laughs> good or bad. Yeah. I want it to go down like a basic bitch American lager, but I want it to be done well. And they just says, it says Lacan, salty state of mind. Where do you think we are right now? They Where? just put us in a salty state of mind. We are at the beach. Yeah. I, for the record, I hate. The Salt Life Company. Yes. And the CEO for killing a teenager. Yes. <laughs> thank you. I don't I'm glad like, Stu said that. I, people might not have known which side we were taking here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank God, Stu. Yeah, we almost we almost really screwed that up. ITPH is anti shooting your underage girlfriend. Now we've cleared that up. We can get back to the podcast. Official? Yeah. <laughs> nice. I mean, I'm speaking for all of us, so correct me if I'm wrong. Here. I'm just afraid we're going to get some negative feedback. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's. I don't know. I don't recall us ever being so wrong on a. Uh... No, we're not wrong. No, no, no. The brand no, sucks. No. So we again, thought the beer was going to suck. I, I thought the beer was going to suck. I still think this one's going to suck. I just cracked this one. I assume it's going to suck. You're on your second one. <laughs> yeah, here we go. When was the last time no, you but, went back to a... Well, I have a 12 pack. Yeah. yeah. But literally, I'm saying it's... A beat of beer has been around for a very long time. They know what they're doing. We, You weren't wrong in what you said when you pre- preempted the beer tasting by saying, hey, I don't like all of this about is this type of guy. These are the people that do salt life. I'm not big on the brand. But what I said, I said a beat is actually a great brewery. Right. And they just... So, you know... 
sun shines on dog's ass every once in a while. So <laughs> they picked the right brewery to get a beer cover. Yeah. I do. I do owe you an update this week on week three peptide update. Oh, Ooh. yeah. 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 Have you been listening, Stu? A little bit. That's a no. It's enough to know that I'm on peptides, but not enough to know how I've been doing. Do you know what peptides are? Yes, I do okay. know what peptides are. We I, had a conversation no the other morning. <clears throat> yeah. We had a con- we I know it's going on a little bit. So, yeah, he actually probably knows this part of it. <laughs> Your wiener fell off. Wiener fell off. <laughs> I don't know how you guessed that. <laughs> I had it in the pool. <laughs> yeah. Well, somebody pay this man. <laughs> That's why he's driving me out of more often. Yeah. So I had an interesting thing happen to me over the weekend. Ooh. While I was drinking, which is when it really... And spending money. Kind of inflames, right? I went to reach for something. And I always, like, I do this, like, kind of, like, half reach so I don't, like, tweak my arm. You've, like, slowly adapted to... It's like, been a like year. If you, like, if you have a bad foot, you you kind of counteract that, right? So you're exactly you walk that, differently, yeah. you just do different things, yeah. Oh, and the sushio conversation, not sushio, uh, wild ginger. We caught up, you told me all about this, yes, that's true, that's true. So I went and I did one of my like broken movements to get yeah. something compensating, and I literally felt zero pain in my broken movement, yeah. Nice, and I was like, shut the front door, and I grabbed it, was like, okay, that's weird. So then I went to what a year ago would have been a natural movement and there was pain, but it was like literally half the pain, not like a shooting, make not you, debilitating, like make yank you your flinch, arm back yeah. down. It was just like, like you touch a hot stove. What was so funny about it is the pain was like so pleasant because I'm so used <laughs> yeah, to like yeah, yeah. debilitating pain. I'm not saying it's fixed everything, but I am currently You're moving towards the light. But this I is, am currently operating at about fifty percent of the pain that I've had in the shoulder. The nice. elbow, elbow is still inflamed. That's still, but my both shoulder, elbows. This my left elbow seems to be yeah. a little more so. This is less than four weeks. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so I'm in. Three. I'm in week three. Week one, no difference. Week two, no difference. I was starting to think. Snake oil. Snake oil. <laughs> and I'm starting to think I'm literally fucking injecting myself like an asshole with snake oil. Mm. Like a salt life drinker. Like a salt life drinker. Uh, but speaking of which. This week, I have movement. I can still feel that. Yeah. But it's not. Like, I can raise my arm over my head. I haven't been oh, able wow. to do this without excruciating So pain. now you can high five at, like, peak high five height. I'm still going to feel that action. Like, I'll feel that yeah. when it happens. But I'm definitely at about 50% of the pain that I have felt in the past. So nice. something is repairing. I'm feeling better. That's good. That's great news. Now, here's the weird thing that I never uh, expected. Here we go. No, no, no this one's weird. weird. Quick question for, for you. <clears throat> yeah. Your pain's less. Have you not changed anything? No, I'm still working out like a ridiculous So, psycho. like, so... The, the baseline has not changed. You're not no, like, in fact, reducing. Kevin, Kevin is, is furious with me. For not reducing? Because he's like, the least you could do while taking this is... Good, better for you. Make an effort to actually also heal instead of just powering through. And I'm like, Kevin, that's not how this works. I power through. Yeah. yeah. Because I want to see if it can really... Yeah. If it can fix me and allow me to keep making gains. Yeah. So the other day I was working out. And there's something that like the pain has kept me from getting to 10 reps at a certain weight. All of a sudden I hit the 10. No. Like, Cause the pain wasn't as bad. I was able to go through it and I was like, yes, I'm back. And so I'm starting to feel, but here was a really weird side effect. I have this like over my, my right eye and my left eye, I get these like scaly crusty Things like my eye itches and I get this scaly crust. Like a skin condition thing? Yeah, I have a skin condition over my eyes. And when? Always? For years now. Oh, I've never noticed. That's because I I went to my general Exfoliate. practitioner and he was like, Oh, just put hydrocortisone on it, which is like a steroid. Yeah. And then I went to my dermatologist and I'm like, yo, you see this like scaly shit here? I was like, my doctor has me putting hydrocortisone. I've been doing that for like two years. And he, my that doc was like Absolutely not. You're just putting a steroid on it. You're not fixing it. So he prescribed me a medicine that I put over my eye. 
And I still have to put it on every day. Like I've been doing this stuff for about a year and it hasn't, it hasn't fixed it. And this stuff was supposed to fix it. Last week, I never put it on because it wasn't itching. So what you're saying is you're repairing yourself from the inside out. Something happened up on, there well, yeah. where for a week I never used my medicine. I wasn't thinking about it because it wasn't itching and it wasn't scaling over. And I was like, whoa, I didn't even think that was a possibility. So your baseline so, is don't put, don't use the cream anymore. Just continue doing peptides and see what happens. So not only was it not itching, it wasn't scaling. It wasn't scaling. Nice. Like crazy. But that's something I never, and then, and, and when I was talking to Kevin about it, he was like, well, yeah, it's because you're shooting in the stomach. You should be shooting right into your arm. And I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to, like, it freaks me out. Like, I'm just going into the fatty area. Hmm. And he's like, but it's hard for it to find all the things wrong. And he's like, no, that's it, why actually, I, but it is finding everything wrong because it's yeah. going throughout the entire body. But that's what he said. He goes, <laughs> he goes, well, that's how it found it because that shit's wrong. And it, it fixed it. He's like, but that's taken away from your shoulder. And I'm like, yeah, but there's so many things wrong. <laughs> like, so, but is there a time? There's no side effects for long-term use of what you're doing. I don't via know. Kevin. Wait till there's an FDA approval. Well, but it's, pepti- it's peptides. It shouldn't be. I agree. It's a totally natural thing in your body. Naturally that you shoot directly into your ass with a needle. It's the natural stomach, way. Stomach. The way it always yeah. was. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing as the, the way your great, great grandfather did it. Correct. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's the same thing. Like a, a lot of people don't B1. B1 is a B1 vitamin. Yeah. It is something that your body needs. It helps you recover over a lot of things, including drinking, but your body doesn't naturally produce it. You get it from foods. Yeah. See, the peptides so are naturally in your body. Right. But you reduce production as you get older. Exactly. And that's why pains come on yeah. and all these Because there's, another, there's another company that you can get B1 vitamins, and if you've been out for a night drinking, you're oh, not going to yeah. eat it. You can just have some B1 and you'll be good. I don't know. I've been I've been very this this week's been been interesting to watch because there's more movement than there's yeah. been in a long time in some places. Like I said, shoulders getting better. Yeah, eyes better. Elbows still hurt. It's not like it knocked everything. But your out. dick did fall off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah was, <laughs> but the shoulder. Let's just focus on the shoulder. Yeah, but what good is having a shoulder? I needed it to beat off. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's <sighs> like the old tale where the guy sells his watch to buy the brush for the. Boom. for the wife and she cuts <laughs> her hair I, off to, what am i the to, gift of the mag yeah yeah, yeah 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 there it is yeah it's unfortunate <laughs> oh it turns out we always had what we needed each other <laughs> yep oh my god uh, and now you got a shitty haircut and i can't tell the time perfect <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up yeah. so i have a funny story to tell you guys oh, i wanted confession so, because his funny uh, stories this is, is basically this confession. Is, this yeah. is, no, this is like uh, about three, not quite three weeks ago. Uh, working out at Orange Theory, doing the rower, and it's a timed row. So it's like how fast can you row uh, 50, meter, 50 meters or 200 meters, which should take you about 30 seconds or so for the average person. So I'm rowing as fast as I can, and I pull back and I squat in. And when I go to pull back, the seat didn't go with me, it stuck. So my ass went up and over and landed on the rails. Oh, no. So there's two side-by-side oh, rails. No. Luckily, it was two-by-two two and not the single. Like, some rowers have a single rail. Yeah. yeah. So I went back up and over and landed on the rails. I was like, fuck, that hurt. Got back on, finished it, and this was Tuesday. And I look in the mirror, like, Wednesday morning. Like, yeah, I'm a little sore. And I got perfect railroad track bruises. Bruises? Like, just a line. Nice. Right down either side of my ass. That's what I look at it Wednesday. Thursday morning, I go for my colonoscopy. Oh my gosh. So I go in there to get my colonoscopy done. Wait, today? No, this was, no, no, this is three okay. weeks ago. I was like, but I was like, Tuesday, I came off the rower. Wednesday, I'm like, I'm a little, oh, it shows up. And it literally looked like somebody just took a white, I mean, a black marker and went shoop, right down the middle of my, both sides of my ass cheeks. Going to get my colonoscopy done. I'm sitting there, and right before the lady shoots the pro foot all, the ner- there's two nurses. The doc hasn't come in yet. And I'm like, look. I looked at her. I said, you're going to roll me over and look at my ass, and you're going to see two perfectly bruised marks. And I said, it was an accident, not recreational. And she started laughing, and she's like, well, enjoy your nap. And went, <laughs> and she's like, I don't want to hear this dude yeah. anymore. She's like, as soon as Sue's out there, like, here's another one coming up with an excuse. Yeah. We don't judge here, sir. Yeah. But... Uh, on to follow up that, um, yeah, if you guys are out there, 
go get go get your uh, go get your colonoscopy. They recommend it prior to forty five if you can. Insurance should pay for it after forty five. Isn't but that I'm a new cold guard it. though, where you just like take a little poop and send it off somewhere? And yeah, and they let you know if you have the cancer cells. They don't clean anything out. They don't go find the polyps. The colonoscopy is where they scope your ass. Yeah, and they pull things out. So that that's the have. beauty of it. They actually yeah. go get the polyps, and those yeah. are what could turn into cancer. Exactly. Yeah. Or they already. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But so the Coligard only detects if you already have yeah. it. But yeah. by getting the polyps removed, you lessen the likelihood of something becoming. And the colonoscopy big. isn't a bad process. It's the getting the ready drink for it. Yeah. It's and so I still the, haven't done it. I'm like. Yeah. Like, and this was my first one, and now I know why Michael Jackson died from. Pro, oh, it's pro so pro. good. It's so good. So if you don't know, the process to getting prepared for a colonoscopy is you got to take the pills and drink the water and you, you're on the Mine was a the, liquid. Mine wasn't a pill. It yeah, was, you have options. You drink a yeah. solution. Well, I did, they they didn't, get, the liquid, the they didn't give me an option. They just gave yeah. me a prescription. I did, the, I did the solution. It was like a liter. I had to drink a, you know, so much every 45 minutes. I want yeah. a liter cold. Four hours. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just, <laughs> you're chugging water in between it. Yeah. So I was doing, I did it the night before. So it like. 6 p.m. and then 2 a.m. I was up drinking this shit, shit my brains out, clear, clean, cleansed out, and then I'm dead tired. Like I haven't eaten anything in 48 hours. Yeah, I'm, I got nothing in me. I go do the colonoscopy. They give me the propofol. I'm out for 25 minutes. Best sleep of your was life. The, it was no, it literally was. Dude, you I wake got, up feeling I got, amazing. I got it. I don't know. I it's got awesome. up and I was like, all right. It was got home by 10 a.m. Did some dishes, did some laundry. Next thing I'm know, I'm at the club playing nine holes of golf. I played a shot, the best nine holes that ever shot in my life and went on about my day, went yeah. back to bed at a regular time, like 10 30. Like, and no possible ramifications. I'm just going to get some of this. Yeah. Tides and propofol. Dude. <laughs> it was she, crazy. She's like, the nurse is like, it, the medicine burns a little bit. And I'm like, okay, well, gone. <laughs> like, yeah. And you could feel it like coursing through you, but then it's like, literally you're I, out. Yeah. And it was the best nap ever i mean i woke up and i would say maybe i uh, had like 15 or 20 minutes from waking where i was like a little but i was they're like uh, yeah, i was you, totally fine they were I like walked out and they're like be sir don't stand up i'm like i'm fine i could have driven home of course they they, they, they won't don't let, let you home. yeah they're like don't operate a motor vehicle later but yeah like a couple hours later i was driving to lunch and like <laughs> i was feeling like a new man like hell yeah, yeah. so huh my two cents is, yeah, the profile is good, but go get a colonoscopy if you can. <laughs> yeah. And if you have a family history, I did it Definitely. two years before I was 45 just because I have family history. Yeah. Of it. And insurance covered it. Yeah. Because if you say, and that's a tip to anybody out family there. Family history. You say, even if you don't, just because yeah. they don't ask, they're not checking. Say you have family history and then you get to the front of the line. I mean, I, I it, it was it was crazy, but I... Like, I was oh, yeah, just we'll going to send right the now. poop in a box. I mean, you could send good. poop in a box to random people if you want. I mean, that'll tell you if you got... Yeah, I just I didn't realize that the polyps removal was a part of the process that actually works yeah. in your favor. Yeah. I, I had never, one never that occurred. was not... I had one that was too small. They said it could have turned into pre-cancer cells, but they removed it, and they like, they come back in five years. Yep. So you had one polyp. Yeah, I had one. And you had like a handful, right? No, I had one. You had one also. Yeah. But like the my, problem was I had to do it twice because the first time I drank the I drank that's the why liquid. I thought you had the yeah. I thought they didn't get them. No, or the first time I drank the, the liquid and I and it's like between drinking the liquid, drink thirty two ounces or sixty four ounces, whatever the measurement was, they're like drink this amount of water. And I followed it to a T. And so when they went in, they were like, You weren't hundred percent cleaned out. So I was like, well, I did exactly what they said. Well, that's I, why I you had to go back in to get the one and, polyp. Yeah. And they were like, they were like, drink all the water you can take in. Like just keep. And I was like, that's, that's not what jam. you said. Well, yeah, no, that's, but that's not, because you drink water. Yeah, I drink water all the time. So I was like, Oh, I can do that. So like that night when like I, I chugged a ton of water before I even started taking the mess. And as I, I took the mess and then I just chugged more water, chugged more water. Yep. Mine started at like four o'clock and then eight o'clock. And then by 10 or 11 o'clock, I was cleaned out, done, felt fine, slept through the night, and got up and get got done first thing in the morning. But it was like, and really the not eating thing was kind of easy. Like it, I didn't feel too bad. How long are you not eating? I didn't eat. It's solid foods for 36 hours. Yeah. Like I and did, then you got to go to Jello or so soups. Like, I ate 
dinner the night before I started the fast. Like, so you have dinner. So then like you have dinner on Monday, you don't eat all day Tuesday. And you go in Wednesday you, morning. And you go in Wednesday morning. It's not that bad. You've That's got, a long time not eating. Though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> but it can be done. No, it can. It's yeah. just that's I'm gonna be a cranky. They do, bitch. and actually, they do allow you to eat certain foods. It's colors they don't want you to eat. Like they let you eat some yeah. jello and like. Yeah, but you can't have like uh, you, can't you can't have, have red horn, dye. Can't have red Gatorade, blue Gatorade. Yeah. But that's you, basically you, a dick tease to eat like jello. I'd rather yeah. just not eat. Yeah, Italian, that's what I did. Italian ices and like uh, lemonade. You can drink and like chicken I, bouillon. I, drank, I, I went and bought those like electrolyte drinks, but like I did the, too. the clear, clear one. ones, and yeah. like yeah. I was mixing those in with the water and like yeah. just. But that's not eating. Like it's just no, but it's keeping you alive. Yeah. <laughs> well, you water is really yeah. the most important thing for the first. But if you drink a lot of water, it's supposed to help you feel more full anyway. Yeah. Which I drink the shit out of water, and it doesn't make me. It's not <laughs> like I'm like I'm not. I'm skipping lunch today because I've had a gallon of water. So just to close out on this whole topic, HCB2, hit cancer below the belt two, dot org. Um, check them out. They got a lot of information on it. Apparently, colon cancer is going to be the number one issue for uh, the generation moving forward between 22 and 47 coming up. It's good stuff to go get checked out. The more and I'll leave know. it there. The more Do you it. know. And Salt Life, this tastes good. The second one tastes just as good as the first one. It's <laughs> I did just have one sip a minute ago where I was like, "Ugh, that one was metallic," and then my next one was again back to the sweet. There's something going on in there, but it's yeah. not enough to. Troy, I forgot to ask you: Did you ever put? Uh, did you ever license your raft? I mean, your your table with a boat. I did. With a motor. I did. I haven't. His table with a motor. It's a dock. It's a floating. It's a, floating, dock it's a motor dock. It's a floating picnic table. Is basically <laughs> what it is, and I haven't figured out like. I went online, I went, you know, I went to court and got it all cleared away and I got the registration thing, but I thought they would send me numbers and something in the, the sticker, but they didn't send me shit. So oh, really? Yeah. So I don't know what I got to do to like make it right. Now I've only been to the lake once this year and it was freezing cold. So we didn't go out on it, but, but I got to figure the that DMV, shit out. You're registered or like per uh, department of gaming. And yeah, Olympics but without races. a sticker, Jigger. you could get pulled. Yeah. For I no got, reason. Yeah. So I got to figure out like what. You buy, I think you buy your own numbers and put on it, but they also have an inspection sticker, but it's not going to get inspected because it doesn't. It, what are you inspecting? Yeah, there's exactly, nothing to inspect. Yeah. There's, yeah. So I think I just have to go like buy my numbers and like affix them to something and screw it into the And print the side out the email it. from Game and Fisheries, yeah. put it in a Ziploc bag, yeah. and tap it to the so underside yeah, of the table. Basically. So the next time the asshole guy decides to pull the floating picnic table with a fucking <laughs> trolling motor on it, and save the fucking world. You're going way too fast. Mm. <laughs> You're like, Troy's a little upset about this. <laughs> it's just a hassle. Look, man, I work. My job takes me into places. I get to tell people what to do. I can do it in a nice way. I can... There, there's, there, there's certain. It's like, it's like your marriage. There's certain fights you want to pick, right? Like, yeah, there's certain <laughs> fights you don't. <laughs> like, you don't need that guy pulling me going 300 yards off my dock to the middle of the lake, anchoring, and then coming 300 yards back in. Whether or not I legally did pay the stupid fine, pay the fees, and register the damn thing, that's not. The problem, the problem on any of these lakes are people that aren't licensed to operate a boat, which everyone right. has to have now. People yeah. that are de driving while intoxicated, yeah. BWIs or whatever they call them now. Like, there's legit problems, and then there's the guy with the fucking floating picnic table. Like, <laughs> that's not your problem. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm gonna let that guy going 30 miles an hour over the speed limit fly by, but the guy going two. He's getting the ticket. Because like, his car looks funky. Yeah. What He's are we, easy to catch. What are we doing? Yeah, I'm definitely easy to catch. Yeah. Jeez, you can that swim up was, to it. Yeah. That guy was profile, profiling picnic tables all day long. Uh, he saw the salt life loggers floating in the water. He was like, this is fresh uh, water, bitch. I'm sitting there yeah. with my wife and two young kids. I'm not drinking, and I'm just trolling back into my into my dock, like, boom, 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 just with a little electric trolling motor. And he's going to save the day by giving me a ticket. Thank you, kind sir. 
He saved the world that was day. It, was it the end of the month? <laughs> Pontoon boats are driving by. You know, yeah. they've been drinking Beer all day. Beer cans yeah. falling off the back. Blasting music, having a having a heyday. And I'm just out here sitting in the middle of the lake. <laughs> That's... I could see my dock. Like, okay, okay, guy. You're on your dock. That's no fun. It's an yeah. extension of the dock. Exactly. It's just floating 100, 100 yards away. And the, and the, and yeah. the whole thing's a new rule anyway. Like, now... If you have a motorized kayak, you have to do it. It's just tax. Oh no, 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 yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. I've, it's and and it's all under the veil hey, of safety. How hard is that test to get your license? It's not hard. It's time consuming as shit. Yeah, I thought it was like eight hours. Yeah, it take and it's like you can't it, fast forward. It, no, you you got to watch the slides. No, and boom, boom, boom. And they ask you some stupid shit like, how many nautical miles off the coast do you have to be before you dump your waste legally? And I'm like. I'm not dumping waste fucking seven miles off the coast. What just, are we talking about? I just pee in the water. Yeah. I'm on a fucking picnic table. Yeah. <laughs> or in, in most of it's for, you know, your average recreational boater doesn't go that far off, you know? No, but those are the kind. So it's basically like when you get your driving test and there's these questions, you're like, that's, yeah. So I would like never a, need to know that. The neighborhood Lake of the Woods that's up off Fredericksburg Route 3, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, the lake is absolutely huge. It's a lot bigger than Lake Anna, but because it's in part of a private neighborhood, we went up there last summer, got an Airbnb house, and we had everything, floats, kayaks, whatnot, but we didn't have a boat. And my, my brother's got a boat. Yeah. So I told him about it. I said, we're thinking about going back this year, but I looked into it. Because it's private, you have to pay for the weekend or the week or the six months or year sticker to for Lake for, of the for Woods the lake. for the boat to put on the boat so that they know you're here, but you don't have, the boat doesn't have to be registered at all. Like legally, it just has to be registered to the private, <laughs> right? So because, it's like a private club. Yeah. It's like a private club. So, cause it's all, you know, it's like taking, uh, making Magnolia green or Salisbury private completely and putting it on top of a big old lake and you run around there. And I was like, well, so this year I was like, well, Brian, just bring your boat. We don't, I'll just pay for it. And it doesn't matter who's driving but that's the uh, advantage of a private lake. I kind of not trying to shit on your point, but Lake Anna is way bigger than Lake of the Woods. Both of them, maybe. Both of what? Both lakes. Lake of the Woods. If you look, largest lakes in Virginia, Lake Anna is number two behind Smith Mountain Lake, and just oh. in front of Kerr Lake and Clater Lake and Lake Gaston. And I thought like, Kerr was. Well, the I couldn't see the. Oh. I couldn't and then see like twentieth or twenty first is Lake of the Woods. Well, it's. I couldn't see the other side of the lake. Like from one end to the other oh. end, so that I couldn't just means see it. It's so the it's biggest like, lake in the country. <laughs> it's, it was a big lake. It's one of the bigger. It was for I love, a private country. I love Stu Logic. Well, I can't see the other shore. This must be the biggest damn lake in the country. <laughs> I, I can't see the other side. It's probably an ocean. <laughs> I love, I love how having a microphone in front of you just makes you an expert. Every once in a while, I'll be like top three. I mean, no, fuck it. It's two. <laughs> it's two. <laughs> Two plus two doesn't equal four. That's right. Actually, and this list is out of order, too. That's weird. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> Stu's right. <laughs> no, well, I'm not right. Lake of the Woods doesn't even have an, an area. Um, Smith Mountain is 32 square miles. Lake Anna is 20 square miles. Kerr Lake is 77 square miles. Clater Lake is 7 square miles. Oh, Lake Clay Gaston is 31 square miles. Then everything else is like under five. Those are big lakes. <laughs> Those are probably just nautical miles. <laughs> Stu was Stu did the conversion. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so technically, it's the largest lake in Virginia, and Virginia includes West Virginia. <laughs> it's all one. And Louisiana, of course. Science. I'm looking at this here, and I'm wondering: should we top it, or should we just cut it? I think we've I think we've uh, hit enough for him. I feel like I mean we're never an hour and a half. Yeah. So I feel good. We can save some topics. We can table them. Man, I got five hundred some... acres. That is not <laughs> with a yeah. It's not that big with a depth of forty five feet. So I'm going to give you some big enough to have a boat on. We give you some teasers. All right, <clears throat> tease me. Gen Z has got a crazy new shower trend. We'll talk about that next week. Nice. They don't. They do. <laughs> oh, they don't shower. I got exactly. <laughs> Bird poop? Question mark? Question mark? Okay. Was yeah. that an elevation in the pitch? 
Red, white, and blue pinstripes. All right. Mm. These are good teases. I'm interested. Interesting. Interesting. This should get the listeners back. Oh, they're all wet. <laughs> <laughs> Did my part. There you go. Did my part. Salt life. Salt life. <laughs> yeah. They're Thank you wet. all so they're much. All for, wet. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll be talking to you next week. If you haven't had a chance to head over to Nectar Sunglasses, the summer is here. Drop Abacus in the coupon code and you will get 20% off of what is already reasonably placed, priced and damn good looking sunglasses and apparel. If you need a mortgage, head over to Screen Door Mortgage and our man Jimmy will take care of you. We will make this a much easier process. Why, why be stressed? The rest of the process is stressful enough. He'll make it easy for you. If you have discretionary money, you need to send it to us. You can always do so at our Venmo. At Inside the Pout House on Venmo. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, please do reach out to us on any of the socials, or you can always get us on Gmail. Is at insidethepallethouse at gmail.com. We'd love to hear what's uh, confounding you and what you want to talk about. That's how I send the topics in. <laughs> Quite literally how yeah. I send the topics in, too. I want to give a shout out to the Abacus. Saw him today walking some dogs on the corner. Nice. And he didn't recognize me, so I just kept driving. I miss that guy. Nice. I miss that guy, too. I hope he's doing well. R.I.P. Oh, no, wait, he's, he's still... alive? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's mm. just, like, somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. Cool. Good for him. And Woody, thank you for the extra hat. That's awesome. Thank you. We do appreciate it, man. Listeners that... uh, By far the coolest guy that goes to Scandals. (laughs) I go go to Scandals. (laughs) Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. (laughs) Fair enough. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Oh, do us a favor. Rate and review. And if you get a chance to Cincinnati swap somebody, just grab their phone, sign them up for Inside the Pallet House, make them a subscriber. But if you can't get your hands on someone else's phones, I know you're hands are all over your phone all day every day rate and review yeah you take shits yeah that's five minutes to review thanks so much for tuning in we'll talk to you guys next week cheers cheers peace out that was a pretty good podcast don't you think salt life